Was the late Roman soldier really so degenerate and inferior compared to the legionary of the late Roman Republic and the early to mid Roman Empire? Was the equipment in the late Roman Empire really so inferior and the discipline really so declined as compared to the discipline of the legionary of earlier times? Well, friends of Roman history, I hope I will be able to show you that even though on first glance it might look that way, in reality the late Roman soldier was as formidable a combatant as the early legionary. I have already in another video hopefully been able to show that the late Roman army as a whole was not inferior to the early Roman army. The Comitatensis and Limitanae taken as a whole it turns out were actually a formidable fighting force and we found out that the Roman Empire did not fall because of their inferiority but because first the late Roman army was successively destroyed mostly in constant civil wars far more so than in encounters with the barbarian invaders and second new recruits were really hard to find in the late empire because the salary of a soldier was already so far diminished as compared to the early roman soldier. Point 2 is linked to the debasement of the roman currency. I discussed these things in these two videos here in which I analyzed the roman army as a whole. But now I'd like to take a look at the individual soldiers of the late versus early roman army and see if it is really true that their equipment deteriorated so much and that they were absolutely inferior to an early legionary. If we take a look at the early Roman army, and with that I mean the Roman army after the reforms of the legendary Gaius Marius in 107 BC, who completely reformed the Roman army into the famous system of legions and auxiliaries, with the equipment that has become so famous. After Marius, the Roman army consisted of highly trained professional soldiers who would enlist in the service of Rome, received a really good salary and even got a nice portion of land after having served Rome for 20 years. From the time of Marius until the time of Caracalla, so for over 300 years, it is estimated that there were around 200,000 legionaries. So these were the elite units with the superior equipment and who would have the Roman citizenship, thus consisting of Italic Romans and then there were at least as many, probably more, around 300,000 auxiliary troops who would be recruited from local populations of the non-Italic Roman provinces, who were not Roman citizens. The Roman legionary of the early empire is what is commonly portrayed in media when talking about the Roman army. He was equipped with a Gallia helmet of typical form, the Lorica segmentata battle armor, this is the famous segmented battle armor, then a rectangular shield called the scutum, then a throwing lance called the pilum and the Roman short sword called the gladius. Although it is still debated as to how common this equipment really was. For instance, the Loica Segmentata armor was really very work intensive to maintain and thus it is sometimes thought that not every legionary wore such an armor but that the chain mail, the Lorica Hamata or the scale mail, the Lorica Squamata was actually used more often. A few specialized units such as those employing siege weapons, for example ballistas and onagers were also part of the typical legion. Now if we compare the legionary to the auxilia soldier, we immediately notice that the equipment seems less impressive. Instead of the lorica segmentata, they were the lorica hamata by default and they typically had an oval shield instead of the scutum. In reality though, this equipment allowed them to be more flexible and thus they were not per se inferior to the legions. But of course, there were also cavalry units as part of the auxiliary forces which can be divided into heavily armored lancers and light cavalry. And there were of course archers and sometimes, but quite a lot more rarely, slingers. But also foiderati, allied soldiers of foreign tribes, were sometimes already used in the auxilia as attested on the column of Trajan. So this means that in order to have a balanced fighting force, the legions would need to be accompanied by auxiliary troops in order to also have cavalry units or archers in the fighting mix. And this was basically a system which stayed like this with some minor changes until the crisis of the 3rd century. As so often with Roman history, it is again the crisis of the 3rd century when things would start to change dramatically. But before we get to that, please like this video and subscribe so that you won't miss any future videos on the fascinating era of the late Roman Empire. And please consider supporting my work on Patreon or via YouTube membership because the long term sustainability of this channel really depends on your support. And I would especially like to thank our new Sol Invictus Patreon supporter 
your boy Aurelian. Thank you so much your boy Aurelian for supporting this channel in such a generous way. Seriously, this channel would not work without our Patreon and YouTube members. And I would really like to thank each and everyone who is supporting this channel in any form. Gratias Tibiago Amiki. Now in order to be more versatile and to be better able to defend against the more numerous and more aggressively occurring barbarian invasions, it was necessary to reform or to adapt the old legionary and auxiliary system of the early empire. Already in 211 AD, the Emperor Caracalla granted the Roman citizenship to all free men throughout the Roman Empire. Thus, the distinction between legiones and auxiliares did not make sense anymore since the auxiliaries now also were Roman citizens, not only the Italic legions. Then the numerous barbarian incursions by the Alemanni, Utungi, Vandals, Burgundians and Goths during the chaos of the mid-3rd century made it necessary to be able to deploy troops to very different frontier regions faster. Thus, an equipment was needed which was lighter, more versatile, easier to maintain and to repair. This is probably the reason why after 250 AD we would see less and less use of the Lorica Segmentata. Even though we all absolutely love the look of this armor, it was just really difficult to produce and to repair and so it slowly gave way to the Lorica Hamata and Squamata. This is not to say that we would not have seen a single Lorica Segmentata in use in the 4th century, but the sight would have been rare. Archaeology cannot give us a definitive answer as to when the last Lorica Segmentata was ever used. But I personally like to imagine that there might have been one or the other ultra-traditionalist soldier, possibly as late as under Majorian, trying to revive the fighting style of old or to revive the olden ways by wearing a Lorica Segmentata. But we might never have a satisfactory answer to this fascinating notion. Regarding horseback units, an aggressive use of cavalry by the Persians, Sarmatians and later the Huns made it absolutely necessary to emphasize cavalry much more. Here the far too underrated Emperor Gallienus is quite notable since he already understood this necessity and it was him who created a mobile reserve cavalry corps in order to be able to respond very quickly to the empire's threats. The size of the legion would now also start to be reduced, not consisting anymore of around 5200 men as in the time of the early empire, but more like 1500 men, divided into more legionary units. So thus it was the tumultuous years from 230 to around 280 AD, when the Roman Empire almost fell, that the military units would change dramatically. The classical legions and auxiliaries gave way to the Comitatenses and Limitanei. The Comitatenses were basically the continuation of the legions and were technically still legions but as I said of smaller size. However what really changed was the equipment they used. In order to be more flexible and better adapted to the new enemies of Rome, the typical Comitatus soldier now wore a different type of helmet. It was more encapsulated and might have offered better protection. And it was called the rich helmet, but sometimes also an attic type of enclosed helmet was used. And as we said, the preferred armor was now not the Lurica Segmentata anymore, but a Lurica Hamata or Squamata. Units in the rear ranks often did not have any armor whatsoever, probably due to cost and efficiency reasons. So the heavily armored units would fight in the front, while the lightly armored units would fight in the back. Most often, as it made sense, these units who did not wear armor were used as archers. They wore a clamus, a type of cloak, a tunic, trousers, a hat called the Pileus Pannonicus, and not a gladius anymore, but a long sword called the Sparta. We can see that they look already much more medieval. Compare that to a more heavily armored unit that wore a ridge or attic type of helmet, an oval shield, a long spear, the speculum, a lorica hamata or squamata armor, and a sparta, and we can already guess that this was really quite different from the old legions that we normally imagine when thinking of the Roman army. But these comitatenses were elite units and we should not make the mistake of underestimating them. Yes, they might on first glance not look as impressive as the legions of old, but they were better adapted to deal with the enemies of the 4th and later centuries. Their equipment reflected the necessity of the times. Their long spears and sparta longswords enabled them a higher range than the classic legionary had. Their ridge helmets were more enclosed and thus possibly offered better protection. 
Their oval shields were possibly easier to maintain and cheaper to produce, while offering a higher versatility with regards to very different combat situations. The different types of heavy versus light armor allowed for more economical use of equipment and the lighter armored units were not dragged down by heavy armor and thus could change position faster. All these changes made the Comitatensis field armies very versatile, adapted to deal with all kinds of different threats that the Empire would face. As I said, there was a heavier emphasis on cavalry and the late Roman cavalry used Catafractarii, heavily armored elite horsemen. However, even the late Western Empire, there was still a stronger emphasis on infantry. So the Comitatensis legions were really a formidable fighting force and as I have laid out in other videos, the Western army dissolved because of constant civil wars and the inability to recruit new troops because of the bad economic situation and the low pay of soldiers, which at some point had made it extremely unattractive to join the legions. As beautifully illustrated in this picture here, where we can see a Roman maiming himself, a very common practice especially in Italy in the 4th and 5th centuries in order to evade conscription, as described by the late Roman historian Ammianus Marcellinus. The Limitanei, on the other hand, the border troops, were often recruited from local tribes, similar to the auxiliary units of old. Quite often Foiderati were made Limitanei troops, and here also, their equipment sometimes was different from the Comitatensis. But in general, these were stationary at the frontiers, where barbarian incursions occurred more often after the 4th century while the Comitatensis were the massive military backbone which could, when dire need arose, be sent across the empire to reinforce the Limitanei where it was necessary. That system worked well for hundreds of years and the late Roman soldier was not inferior to the early legionary. His equipment was better adapted to the needs of the times and in fact the Romans won many giant victories against the Germanic invaders until the very end. Regarding the supposed decline in discipline, we should be very careful here, because that theory comes in large parts from Vigetius, a writer of the late 4th or early 5th century, who was a traditionalist and thought that the older ways of the Roman army were better. He propelled the idea that the late Roman army was undisciplined and degenerate compared to the early imperial legions and that notion fascinatingly has survived until modern times. We again see how our modern views are sometimes still dictated and influenced by ancient writers from 1500 years ago. I will need to make a video on how our view of Roman history is very biased because it often stems from historians and authors who were often biased themselves. But the late army cannot have been so degenerate because Stilicho won gigantic victories against many different Germanic invaders, even in the early 400s, defeating them many times. Then later Constantius III was quite successful against the Germanic invaders. Then Aetius against the Huns and Majorian against the Burgundians and Visigoths. They all still won huge victories with these Comitatenses and Limitanei and they slowly dissolved in the course of the 5th century in the West because at some point there simply wasn't enough tax revenue left in order to recruit new high quality troops and the salary and incentives to become a soldier had just deteriorated too much. Thus by the time of Majorian, most troops were already entirely recruited from Germanic tribes and were made up of barbarian foederati. But the Comitatenses and Limitanei survived in the Eastern Roman Empire and the last Roman legion in fact, the Legio Quinque Macedonica, can be traced until the Arab conquest and it is last mentioned in 637 AD, 700 years after it was founded. Truly incredible. It was then in the 7th century that these old Roman military units changed again into the Eastern Roman or Byzantine military, about which of course I will need to make an entire video, because even though different, many Roman tactics, strategies and equipment survived well into the Middle Ages in the Eastern Roman Empire. And if you are interested in learning more about how the Roman army transformed from the early to the late empire, you can watch this video here in the upper right corner. But if you are more interested in why the late Roman army had such massive trouble to find new recruits, you can watch the other video in the lower right corner. I say thanks again to all friends of Roman history, gratias Tibiago and bene valete.